so in this video, we're going to talk about how to run estimates and how to measure a roof. I'm going to start off with how to measure a roof. Again, uh, I talked about this a little bit in the sales portion of these videos and building out a team. Guys, don't, don't measure a roof with a pen and a piece of paper and measuring tape. There's just no sense in doing it anymore. There's aerial measurement services, whether you do it with Planometer, you go to Google Earth, or use one of the paid aerial measurement services like RoofScope or iRoofing, or you use Eagle View, which is kind of like the, you know, the old school way of doing it. I'll say old school, but I think it's the first aerial measurement service. But the point is, is there's better ways of doing it and there's better ways of spending your time and that's using aerial measurements. I use Planometer a lot or Google Earth because I know the formulas. It's real simple. You're gonna get your ground square footage. You're gonna figure out what the slope is. Guys use Google Earth. You can use Google Earth or you can type in the address on Google and you can look at photos. There's street views almost all the time of building and houses you're looking at. Once you've done this for a while, you can kind of figure out what the slope is just by looking at it. And you can build estimates by sitting behind your computer without having to go out to the job site and climb on people's roof, which is dangerous, or you have to pay somebody else to do it, okay? So just understand those aerial measurements that are out there. Find the one, the best one that works for your company. Again, I typically use Planometer to measure my own roofs and use your own formulas. It's really simple to figure out how to do this, guys. I'd walk it through you in this video, but I mean, it, it's just something you just need to Google. I mean, it's real simple how to figure out the formula to measure a roof or just pay to have somebody else do it uh, with one of the measurement services. A lot of times, I, I'll probably say I do it myself a lot and if it's a big enough contract, or I'm unsure what the slope or the pitch of the roof is, I just go ahead and pay for it. We got lots of information on our YouTube channel on how to measure a roof using your cell phone and stuff like that and using your computer. So go to our YouTube channel. We got a lot of different videos about it. I don't wanna harp it in this video series because I feel like there's better use of our time. Okay, so let's talk about how to write estimates. Now, most of you are going to do two types of work when you first start. You're going to be doing insurance work. Or you're going to be doing retail work. Some people, when they do, so let's first talk about insurance work. That's how a lot of people get in because it's, people want to be able to do insurance work because you're getting somebody else to pay for the roof. The insurance company's paying for it, even though it's the homeowner's policy, right? But a lot of people start doing that because it's, it's easier. You can make money faster. Uh, you don't have to wait as long and if you could talk to people into getting a roof claim done you get to keep majority of the profits if you set up your company that way I'm gonna talk to you why I think just writing an estimates a better solution than working off insurance paperwork but it's totally the way you decide to run your company there are a lot of other people who teach courses I do nothing but insurance claim and there's a lot of people who make a lot of money they hire public adjusters and they hire independent adjusters and they take things you know to courts and we're not going to spend our whole video series talking about that stuff because again insurance claims can be um i'm gonna save that i'm gonna save that for another video talking about insurance claims specifically but if you are doing that type of work a lot of times when it comes to writing an estimate you're going to work just off the insurance paperwork so i'm just going to do a whole video dedicated to insurance work but a lot of times people build their estimates just off of Xactimate or whatever the insurance company is and they work from it. The other way of doing it is building out an estimate. Now, the typical way that I would like people to build out an estimate is you learning how much your labor is gonna cost, how much your materials are gonna cost, and then the extra items that you're gonna need. And those three items are gonna give you everything you need to know about building out an estimate. Okay, so you're gonna to need to know what your material cost is gonna be. So it's gonna be, let's pretend uh, for the sake of this video, that we're getting ready to bid on a project that is a 50 square asphalt shingle roof that is a 12 fold pitch okay and if you don't know what all those terms are again just go to our youtube channel we've got tons of videos talking about the basic stuff that you guys need to know we're talking about running a company not teaching you basic roofing terms here so let's say you got this 50 square roof you call your supplier and you're like hey i got this project over time you're going to know what all the numbers are but they're going to give you a quote and let's just say your materials are going to be six thousand dollars okay you call your sub and you're like hey man i got this 50 square roof it's 12 12 pitch how much how much are you going to charge me he says hey i'm going to charge you hundred dollars a square 
this is a 12 12 pitch it's two stories some of it he's going to charge you a hundred dollars so you're going to take your six thousand dollars for your material costs you're going to take your five thousand dollars plus your labor costs and then you go well it's two stories up there uh, i'm gonna have to pay for dump fees and we're just gonna add some extra cost on this one just uh just to, you know for the exercise and you're gonna have to get a so let's say your sub said hey man my dump trailer's out can we, you get a dumpster out there so you have to call and get a roll-off dumpster put out there and let's see what else are you gonna have to do uh, let's say that you're going to have to also get uh, an equipter out there, some other piece of material, whether it's a boom lift or a forklift or something else out there, you're going to have to pay for. Okay, just to keep you know the numbers easy. So let's say your roll-off dumpster is going to be another 500, and then you got to rent some other piece of equipment that's going to be another 500. So you're going to take your $5,000 or your $6,000 for your material, your $5,000 for labor, and then you got $1,000 for your extra cost for your dumpster and stuff like that. And let's throw in. Um, just throw in another thousand dollars just again these are to keep numbers easy for your permitting and you got to get a new license and a new place to, to do this project it's in a it's in a new city and they're going to require you to do to sign up for a license there so your total cost is thirteen thousand dollars to do this 50 square project okay so now you need to figure out what your profit margin is going to be i recommend doing no less than 30 percent gross profit okay we're going to talk more about profits and cash flow and stuff like that with running the business, but just for this simple problem of writing your estimate, I want you to understand how to get your profit. Now, most people would take, you know, your five thousand or your six thousand plus your five thousand plus a thousand plus another thousand. It's going to give you thirteen thousand dollars to do the project, and they're going to multiply by one point three. That's not how you figure out your your true profit margin. That's not going to give you thirty percent. You need to divide by 0.7. Okay, so whatever your profit, if you want 40% profit, you divide by 0.6, divide by 0.5. The point is you divide by, if it's again, it's, if, let's pretend it's, you want 10% profit, you divide by 0.9. If you want 20% profit, you divide by 0.8. If you want 30% profit, you divide by 0.7. If you don't believe me, read any general contractors licensing books in America, they're all gonna tell you the same thing. You can put 1.3 and multiply it if you want to, but I'm telling you what you really should put, okay? So that's what you're gonna do to figure out your profit margin. So you're gonna divide by 0.7. Guys, you need to be doing at least 30%. I'm telling you, you have to do 30, listen to me, do 30%, unless it's just a favor for somebody that you really, really owe. You're doing yourself a disservice if you're doing any residential work. And even when you get into commercial work, you need to set like 30% needs to be where you shoot from 25 at like the bare minimum because you, you're going to incur other costs. Even, even running your company very low, low overhead, you're going to have other costs. So that's how you're going to write your estimates. Okay. So people overcomplicate this. You need to figure out what your material, your labor, and then your additional costs are going to be. If you're going to be going outside of town to doing this, you got to stay overnight and you're going to have to pay for that. That's going to be in your extra costs. You're going to have to pay for hotels and stuff like that. Include that into your estimate. Don't add it at the end. Include it in your estimate and add a profit margin because you never know what your overhead is going to be. If it's going to be fuel, stuff like that, add that into your estimate. And that's how you write them. It's really simple. Profit, or excuse me, you're going to do labor, materials, extras, and then add in your profit margin. Okay? Simple as that.